Hey everyone, Michael O'Brien here. So today I wanted to do a new segment. This is one that I've been wanting to do kind of for a really long time. And uh, this segment is gonna be called Anatomy of a Performance. This is a segment in which I will take a performance, either something I've performed or a performance from another performer, and I will kind of talk about the performance, you know, why it worked, what made it so good, all of these things. Maybe even what made it so bad if I find a bad enough performance. Uh, but in this video, I wanted to highlight one of my favorite magicians. Anytime someone asks me, who's your favorite magician? It's almost always gonna be David Stone. David Stone has been a very big influence in my performance style, my magic career. He's introduced me to restaurant magic, and he is, in my opinion, probably one of the best magic lecturers, if not the best magic lecturer you will ever see. He has a really good way of performing for both magicians and laymen that are extremely entertaining. And uh, I mean, you know what? Let's go ahead and watch a video. This is a video of David Stone's performance. I'm gonna show the video in its entirety. For those of you who are not sure who David Stone is, he's a French magician. Uh, this video is going to be in French, but there's going to be some English uh, subtitles at the bottom so you guys can uh, kind of follow along a little bit. I'll be honest with you, the patter itself is not too important here. I want you guys to focus on the performance itself as well as how the audience is reacting. We're going to watch David Stone's entire performance. I think it's about 15 minutes long. And then at the end of the performance, we're going to come back and I'm going to talk about it. So don't go anywhere after the performance. But ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce Mr. David Stone. <laughs> David Stone! <laughs> Mesdames et Messieurs, bonsoir, merci beaucoup. Je suis très heureux de vous rencontrer ce soir. Je m'appelle David Stone, je suis français. Mais je sais bien que Stone, ça ne fait pas très français, mais c'est simplement parce que je suis français du côté de ma maman et anglais du côté du meilleur ami de mon père. J'ai passé. Alors, j'ai travaillé hier soir chez un grand producteur de films, donc j'ai dû travailler des accessoires assez caractéristiques. <rire> Je vais tenter de vous montrer mon meilleur tour pour débuter cette session avec un petit foulard. <rire> Et... <rire> Des questions Das. Ouais, parce que je reviens à l'Espagne. J'ai au moins appris un mot. Tres, uno, dos, tres, y... Ah, vous connaissez déjà tout <rire> Uno, dos, tres, y... Merda <rire> Là, on appelle ça de la mise direction. Ouais, parce que la plupart des, des, des magiciens emploient ça. 
Et les spectateurs pensent que les magiciens utilisent les manches pour faire leur tour. <rire> les manches <rire> C'est vrai. <rire> Mais pas moi, enfin, moi je n'emploie pas les manches, je... d'ailleurs vous pouvez même les gagner. <rire> <rire> Attends de voir la bouteille hein. <rire> Maintenant, je vais faire un petit test de ce qu'on appelle un test d'audience. Je vais demander donc à, par exemple à monsieur, comment est-ce qu'on appelle ça en français hein Un jeu, très bien. <rire> voilà, et on va demander à monsieur également, tenez, soyez attentif et, et répondez-moi franchement. Soyez franco. Où sont les gars Elles <rire> sont là, hein, j'ai fait ouais. le <rire> Si vous me voyez bien, dites-moi stop quand vous voulez pour choisir une carte. Allez-y. Stop. Alors, je, je ne regarde pas, d'accord je, je, je ferme les yeux, je tourne le regard, j'ai de la montre à la... Euh, voilà. <rire> Et maintenant, croyez-le ou non, je vais tenter de retrouver votre carte sans utiliser les manches. Pour la première fois, c'est parti. Attention. Hop, 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 hop. Et je crois, je crois qu'il s'agit de votre carte. C'est la vôtre, bravo Ça calme, hein oh. Je vais vous montrer un autre truc, vous allez voir, avec une pièce, c'est juste génial. Ah. 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 Non, non, je suis improvisé, j'ai tout prévu. Ouais. Ah. Merde. Ah. 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 C'est pas vraiment ce qui était prévu, mais... Ah qu'on appelle un tour de pièces. <rire> Et c'est un tour international, vous allez comprendre pourquoi. Oui, je sais ce que vous pensez, mais non, 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 non. Ah non, ça ne sera pas facile, non, non. En fait, elle reste toujours au même endroit, c'est-à-dire euh, ici. Bon, je, je, je refais, je vois que j'ai été trop rapide. En fait, j'en fais une boulette. Je ne sais pas si vous voulez la boulette, je place la boulette entre les doigts. Je la place dans la main droite. Je la lance en l'air. Et là, on a l'impression qu'elle revient. On dit, on ne voit pas, mais avec un peu de travail. Euh... <rire> À ce moment-là du tour, en règle générale, il préfère, c'est pas fréquent, le, le coup du maître. Je sais pas pourquoi, mais vous... <rire> Mais... Oui. Et puis il me le dit comme ça. Tu te coupes pas <rire> Tu coupes Voilà, et tu prends la caméra et tu t'apprêtes à faire une photo, t'es vrai Ouais, après. Et bien Et là, tu me dis, mais oui, je suis en train de te filmer. <rire> tout va bien Tu sais que tu vas pas sortir vivant de ce soir <rire> T'es prêt Tu es prêt à prendre une photo Attends. Tu m'entends Ok. Tu es prêt à prendre une photo C'est bon. Tu es prêt à arrêter de filmer aussi On y va. Super, c'est parti. Bouge pas <rire> Je vais vraiment je vais tenter de vous montrer un petit tour, un vrai tour de carte précis. Euh, un petit tour un peu avec des. <rire> Marquez les gens pourraient penser que je triche avec les miennes. Alors, est-ce que quelqu'un a éventuellement un paquet de cigarettes à me. <rire> ah, bah voilà Alors, Sylvain oh. Sylvain, vas-y, voilà. très bien. Je vais... Ah, bah c'est parfait. Bah écoute, tu vas faire comme tout à l'heure, vas-y, tu les lances en l'air. Voilà, très bien. <rire> T'as répété avec Jean-Luc Bertrand, non <rire> Allez, tiens, je suis sympa. <rire> non, parce qu'en fait, j'ai arrêté de fumer. J'ai complètement arrêté. Enfin, je suis super content. Maintenant, je, Maintenant, je prise. 
Et euh, ou alors j'ai les patchs, ça dépend des coups. Alors là je vais vous montrer quand je prise, c'est pratique parce que ça dérange personne en général. Vous voyez qu'il va comme ça. Alors je vais dans. On va être, je ne l'avais pas dans le nez, je vous rassure, ce que je vous vois en train de vous. Non, non, je l'avais sur le coude. Mais je vais super vite. Vous allez voir, ça, ça donne l'illusion de la mettre sur le coude. Tac, 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 elle disparaît. Dingue donc <rire> Non, non, je ne l'avais pas. Je vais le refaire, tout le monde va comprendre comment ça marche. D'accord, je vais lui, mais après je vous explique. D'accord Ouais, mais... ouais, 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 ouais. <rire> Comment on appelle ça C'est la poisse. Il euh, y a quelqu'un qui passe après <rire> Non. non. Euh... Ah bah j'ai l'idée, on a qu'à mettre un tout petit peu d'huile de, de, de coude. Pas grand chose, hein, d'huile de coude, j'ai l'impression de... La réparer Donc si ici il y a la cigarette et ici le briquet, où est la... la... Ah. Et ben, en fait la cigarette elle est, elle, elle est sous le coude, mais comme il n'y a personne qui m'écoute quand je parle, forcément dès que je décide d'allumer le merde <rire> Non mais non, non rassurez-vous, c'est parce que le briquet il est derrière l'oreille, au début les gens ne voient pas, mais forcément dès que leur mouche... Ah C'est évident <rire> Non, 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 là, il vous l'expliquer, il est caché derrière l'oreille. Au début, les gens ne le voient pas, donc comme il n'est pas, il est, il est pas là, et forcément, il est avec le briquet. Il est où le briquet Bon, ben, vous comprenez pourquoi j'ai arrêté de fumer maintenant <rire> qui filme et qui s'en vente, alors lui Bon, euh, monsieur par exemple, vous avez l'air sympa, vous voulez bien venir à mes côtés Voilà, on va vous les mettre ici, ici pendant qu'on l'applaudit très fort et vous tribuez sur le Nickel, nickel, est-ce que vous pouvez euh, me dire stop quand vous voulez pour choisir une carte pour tous vos amis Allez-y, vous la tirez, vous la montrez à tout le monde. Stop. Parfait <rire> Vous voyez, ça marche. Hein. <rire> bon, bah, euh, 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 bah, il faut prendre les grandes lignes, n'importe laquelle, je vais mettre à tout le monde, sauf à moi, je ne regarde pas. Enfin, je vais le montrer à tous vos amis. Voilà. Vous voyez, il faut prendre tous vos amis. <rire> 10 de trait. Alors, est-ce que vous pouvez. Alors, vous allez l'enfoncer, mais dans la partie de l'éventail. Et d'un coup sec, allez-y, tout doucement, c'est parti. Et 1, 2, 3, la carte va disparaître toute seule. Toute seule. Je vous les montre de face, pour ne pourra pas les détricher. Elle, elle va apparaître entre les cartes, entre les cartes, entre ta raison Retourne, retourne, retourne la carte, retourne la carte. Tu es d'accord avec moi qu'elle est pas sur mon fond, d'accord donc si je la prends et si je la mets dans le paquet, elle est pas sur mon fond. Oui, ah oui. si je la prends et je la mets dans le paquet, elle est pas sur mon fond. Donc si je fais ça et toutes les cartes disparaissent, toutes les cartes, elles vont toutes sous le spray, sous le spray, sous le spray. Ah ouais. Alors si je mets un tout petit peu de là-dessus, on a l'impression que la carte disparaît. Complètement. Non seulement ta carte disparaît, alors elle est, elle est restée dans le jeu, forcément. Elle est quelque part dans le jeu, mais quand je fais ce mouvement... Ouais, parlez pas, je des dieux. <rire> elle tombe dans la poche Monsieur, est-ce que vous l'avez vu tomber dans la poche Mets la main dans la poche, vas-y Mettez la main et dites-moi, et sortez dans l'objet immédiatement Montrez à tout le monde qu'il s'agit de... Ma bah, merde Qu'est-ce <rire> que vous sortez Qu'est-ce que c'est Ah Qu'est-ce que vous... Non, des pas, il y a une... C'était ta copine Qu'est-ce que vous sentez Une seule carte Montrez à tout le monde qu'il s'agit de votre carte Merci Ou pas Non, parce que vous êtes trompé de carte, parce qu'en fait, ce sont toutes les cartes qui sont allées dans ma poche. Toutes les cartes, il n'y en a qu'une seule qui est restée ici. Une seule, et je crois que c'est la vôtre. Et je vous demande de me faire un petit souvenir, vous allez signer 
avez la carte à défaut de la signer, vous mettez votre code PIN, je sais pas, <rire> je personnalise n'importe quoi. Et nous allons utiliser le téléphone portable, un accessoire de technologie d'aujourd'hui. Vous voyez, alors c'est un, un téléphone génial, l'avant d'un Innoca, pour tous ceux qui sont toujours à la bourre comme moi, vous voyez, c'est pas ça arrive devant le rendez-vous. Et pour les dames <rire> Voilà, tu auras droit, toi aussi, tu peux le Il en reste encore un peu. Est-ce que vous pouvez, s'il vous plaît, mettre la main sur le téléphone Allez-y, afin de recouvrir. Et je vais prendre la carte, la placer juste ici, et faire un tout petit mouvement. Pour que c'est tôt la carte et la carte revient. Il y a trop de poils. La carte disparaît. Complètement. Complètement. Non seulement elle disparaît, mais elle n'est plus dans le jeu. Parce qu'elle est allée sous votre main. Soulevez la main, s'il vous plaît. Qu'est-ce qu'il y a sous la main Il n'y a rien. Entre les doigts. Sous les aisselles. Alors, en fait, si la carte n'est pas dans le jeu non plus, c'est parce que si vous regardez bien, elle est allée, non pas sous, elle est allée dans le téléphone, à l'intérieur du boîtier de batterie. Je ne sais pas si vous voyez, regardez juste ici, il n'y a qu'une seule carte qui est à l'intérieur. Est-ce que s'il vous plaît, mademoiselle, vous pouvez vous-même la prendre, je ne vais pas y toucher, on va m'accuser de tricher. Est-ce que vous pouvez vous-même la déplier et montrer qu'il s'agit de la carte que vous avez choisie Merci. Il y a une petite surprise, normalement, à l'intérieur de la salière. Si vous regardez, il y a... Il n'y a rien Et forcément, il n'y a rien Parce qu'il n'y avait pas la place suffisante pour pouvoir y mettre la bouteille La bouteille All right, so whew, what a performance. What did I tell you? It is, it's just brilliant. So in this video, I wanted to talk about what it is that makes David Stone such a powerhouse of a performer. And there's a few key aspects that I wanna kind of highlight in this video. So the first one is the introduction. They say that a uh, first impression is everything and it really sets up the tone for how the whole act is going to go. So one thing that you want to do is you want to kind of create a tone for those of you who are not sure what I'm talking about, how the audience is going to feel, right? So David Stone's performance is very silly, very lighthearted. The audience is constantly laughing. Uh, David doesn't really take anything too seriously. He's just kind of having a good time and performing magic. So, Literally, the first thing that he does is he comes out and he introduces himself. Hello, everyone. My name is David Stone. Uh, I'm French. I know my last name sounds English, but that's because I'm French from my mom and English from my dad's best friend. So right off the bat, you get the sense like, okay, this guy's going to be like telling some jokes. He seems like a really funny guy, He's lighthearted. And then the next thing he does is he reaches into his bag and he says, I wanted to show you guys a movie prop from the last film that I had just done. And he pulls out this like little, you know, like cheetah print zebra striped, like little close up pad thing, uh, obviously insinuating that it was a porn film that he was doing. And then he says, you know, uh, I want to show you guys, I want to make something appear out of just this little, this little handkerchief. And then he pulls like this bed sheet <laughs> out another prop from the movie that he was just in and produces like this little half dollar coin out of the, out of the bed sheet. 
So right off the bat, like a good 30 seconds has gone by and the first magic effect, which isn't even really magic, it's really more of a gag, is that a coin was produced. That's all that's happened and already the audience is rolling. They are super drawn into it and they are having a good time. So this is a really good introduction, right? <clears throat> the, the opening things that you do, the things that you say. Uh, me personally, anytime I, uh, I'm coming into a, a performance, I'll use, hey everyone, my name is Michael O'Brien. I'm really excited to be here and raise your hand if this is your first magic show. Or like if I'm performing at the Magic Castle, raise your hand if this is your first time at the Magic Castle, right? People will put their hands up. Awesome, raise your hand if this is your last time. <laughs> sometimes people will put their hands up, sometimes they won't, right? But it gets kind of the sense like, oh, okay, you know, this guy's kind of silly, you know, he's gonna be telling some dad jokes and like stuff like that. So that's kind of what you wanna do. You wanna set the tone for your show. If I'm a Max Maven, for example, right? Now he is kind of silly, but it's more dark humor. He's, you know, very serious when he's performing and he's, he's a mentalist, right? So if I came out doing the David Stone gig, right? Doing all the, the silly stuff. And then I start seriously reading people's minds. I want you to focus on the word that you are thinking of, right? It's a tonal shift. It, it, it doesn't feel right. So the introduction, the way that you introduce yourself, your opening act, it needs to kind of set the tone for what the rest of the show is gonna be like. So that's the first point. The second point, is uh, the transitions and like the pacing. Uh, if you watch the act, it's a bunch of magic that kind of doesn't really go together if you think about it. Uh, there's a bottle production, there's coin magic, there's a card trick, uh, there's some stuff with cigarettes. Um, you know, there's uh, another card trick where a card vanishes and appears inside of David's phone. None of these things really have anything to do with one another. But uh, David does a really good job of tying all of these things together with something that I like to call a callback. So David does a lot of these callbacks throughout the entire act, right? The most glaring obvious one is the tape deck. <laughs> the tape deck appears throughout the entire act and it actually is the thing that ties and strings all of these effects together. So when we're talking about pacing, uh, what I'm talking about is David's ability to go uh, not only through the effects and keeping people's attention, but the length of the effects and how he ties them all together. So let's kind of break that down a little bit. First thing you'll notice whenever you're watching David Stone perform is that usually no more than like 10 or 15 seconds goes by without something happening, right? But it's not rushed and it's not overloaded. So. I'm not saying magic needs to happen every 15 seconds, but something needs to happen every 15 seconds. Uh, even when just having a spectator choosing a card, for example. Excuse me, you don't just have them take a card. And okay, I won't look. Okay, show the audience. All right, now go ahead and put it back in. He's got something prepared for that, right? Even if it's something silly, like, uh, you know, he'll have them choose a card out of the deck and then he'll turn around and he'll make a joke to the audience about something and then uh, he'll do some kind of like little gag or something and then he'll come back and he'll have the card put back into the deck. So things are happening throughout, right? Whether it's a joke or a gag or another like, uh, I'll call it a mini magic effect, right? So like the, the grand magic effect is that, you know, uh, he's making this, this uh, card vanish and then like appear in his mouth, right? Like that's like what the effect is. But then like on the side, like uh, something over here happens or he knocks something over off the table and then he does his little, another thing that he does a call back, his little and then he tosses it up and catches it with his hand. Uh, he does that a few times throughout the act, like little things in between, right? So for me, when I'm performing, uh, my opening effect is the purse frame and I produce either a coin or sponge balls out of the purse frame and then I do magic with that stuff. My callbacks that I do throughout the act is I pull out the purse frame again and I do something, right? So like for one moment, uh, at the end of a, a performance, I'll be like, oh man, it's hot in here, hold on. And I reach into the purse frame and I pull out a handkerchief, 
I kind of cleaned my face. I put the handkerchief back in the frame and then I put the, the purse frame and, and the handkerchief away. And, and, and it's just, it's a silly little thing, but it, it kind of uh, helps me to transition, right? And so like, and then I'll do the, uh, the, the joke like, oh, wait, where was I? Oh yeah, I was over here. And like, I'll, I'll walk like three feet over and I'll stand like a little George Carlin thing, right? So like little things like that uh, are going to keep the audience interested. There should never be long moments of time where just nothing is happening. Even, even if you're just going to make a joke, something should be in there, right? And the routines themselves, if you notice, uh, in this act uh, off the top of my head, uh, I don't remember the whole thing all the way through, but it's like uh, a coin routine and then a card routine uh, and then a cigarette routine and then another card routine and then um, the, the climax where he produces his shoes and all that stuff. Um, each mini routine is like about three minutes. He's, he's almost doing like a strolling set, but like in a formal environment. And then all of those things are tied together by little bits of magic that are happening in between. So the next question is, okay, so we have pacing. How do we transition from trick to trick? So the way that David does it is by using like these callbacks, right? And uh, oftentimes, like I said, it's that tape deck is the callback thing. So for example, um, he uh, produces the coins and he goes on to do some coin magic, right? And then he sets the coins down on the table and uh, he, he turns one of the coins like into the tape deck, right? And then he, he notices one of the coins is slightly off. So he like uses the tape measure, right? To realign the coin on the table. And then like, uh, you know, it's kind of like a little gag joke thing, but it's funny. It, it's like, it makes sense. It's like, he's like, well, I have this thing now, I might as well use it. So he justifies the tape deck by using it to measure out the coins on the table, showing kind of his eccentric side a little bit too. Cause it's like, he's like this silly guy, but like maybe he has OCD because like the coin was off by like an inch and he had to like make sure that it was perfectly lined up with the other coins so much that he actually uses the tape deck to do that, right? So again, it all kind of plays into his character. So how does he transition from a coin trick to a card trick, right? Well, what he does is after he's done doing that, he has the tape measure, right? And he's like, does anyone know what this is called, by the way? And then someone in the audience, they answer, right? Of course, it's in French. I'm assuming they said like a tape deck. And he goes, you're right, it's a deck. And he opens his hand and it's a deck of cards now. Then he takes out the cards out of the box and he goes on to do his... Uh, I think he calls it French kiss. I forget the name of, of the routine where uh, the card <clears throat> vanishes from the deck, appears folded up in his mouth, and then he puts it in a little baggie. He sprays it with like disinfectant and he puts it in a little baggie and then he hands it to the spectator. So um, all that stuff is just like really silly, right? So now he goes from a card trick to like a cigarette manipulation act. Well, how does he go from a card trick to a, cigar a cigarette manipulation act? Well, he ties those things together by, again, he does a callback and he goes, does anyone know what this is? And he's holding a deck of cards and then someone from the audience, it's a deck. He goes, no, it's cigarettes. And he opens it and then there's cigarettes inside of the card box. Now. <clears throat> so it's actually like a little cigarette box. And then he goes on to uh, do some cigarette manipulation stuff. I think the name of the routine is uh, no smoking or quit smoking, I forget. Um, but he does his like, his cigarette manipulation act with like the lighter and stuff. And, um, and then when there's a moment where uh, you think, oh, I don't know how to quite transition from one thing to another, he does another mini magic thing, right? <clears throat> so like after the cigarette thing, uh, you know, he, he's like, oh, is, is it anyone else getting kind of hot in here or whatever? And he takes off the jacket and he pulls out like a little French cocktail and he like takes a drink from the cocktail, right? So um, if ever you're not quite sure how to transition from one thing to another, it's okay to just kind of pause, do like a fun like little mini thing, whether it be a gag, you can do another callback thing. Uh, at one moment, it's really funny because he does an anti-callback thing where he has the tape measure again, but then he drops it and he does the thing where he goes like this and you think the tape deck's gonna pop up, but like the coin pops up again. And he's like, yeah, and he just like throws the coin away, right? Like little things like that are really silly, but they kind of tie the whole act together. 
So at the end of the performance, uh, when someone walks away, for me, it's always what, when they walk out of your show and they're standing in the lobby or after you leave and, and they're talking to each other, um, you know, at the table or at their home or wherever you did the gig, uh, what are they saying to each other? In David Stone's performance, I can guarantee you they're going to be talking about how funny he was, how he kept making his tape measure appear, and how he kept messing up, but then he kept fixing it afterwards, and then he did this like really cool thing with the deck of cards. And like those are the kinds of things that they're going to be talking about, right? Um, th they're going to be telling mostly about how they feel. So um, that's kind of the things that you want to make stand out is your performance, your character, you know, are you really funny? Like you can, you can do like five really incredible pieces of magic, but like if they were boring or the audience wasn't really connecting or the, the magic felt disjointed, like it didn't really go together or anything like that, uh, the audience might just be like, oh yeah, he did like, I think he did like this thing with like some cards where like, you know, the card vanished from the deck and it appeared like inside of his wallet or something and then like he did this thing where he turned like one dollar bills into hundred dollar bills and then he did this other thing where like you know and you don't want them to really think of like what oh he did these tricks like you want them to go away and be like, oh yeah he was hilarious you know he did this and he did that and oh it was so funny when he did this and hey charlie remember when he did that like that's kind of for me at least what i kind of want uh, my audience is talking about after the show. It's less about the magic itself and more about how I was able to connect with the audience and how I made them feel. So now uh, we're getting towards the end of the performance and how do you put a button on it? How do you cap everything? So he ends with a card trick where he made the card um, vanish and appear inside of the cell phone, right? And then he says, oh, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Not only that, but if you look inside the salt, the, sh the salt shaker, right? Like you're thinking like, oh, maybe something vanished from the deck and appeared inside the salt shaker or something, right? And then he picks up the salt shaker and he goes like, ah, just kidding, it's just a handkerchief, right? And so he pulls like the little handkerchief out and then he uses that handkerchief to produce the bottle that he produced earlier in the show. He just steals it off the table. I mean, you can see it in the video, but if you're watching live, I promise you, you don't catch it. I actually performed David's bottle production and then his bottle encore production um, multiple times with doing like restaurant magic and stuff. <clears throat> of course, you can't misdirect the camera, but if you're watching it live, it's incredible. So he produces the bottle and then he produces both of his shoes. A uh, classic David Stone closer. He pretty much has closed every single show I've ever seen him perform. Uh, in that way that's just kind of the thing that he's become known for is the guy that produces the wine bottles and then produces his shoes at the end so the moral of the story is now that you guys know all these little things that i talked about i want you to go back one more time and i want you to watch david stone's performance through again and i want you to keep some of these things that i talked about in mind right the thing that truly makes david stone a powerhouse of a, of a performer is his ability to keep his audience engaged, to seamlessly transition from effect to effect, when something might start to kind of get dull or not feel quite finished, he'll throw some kind of a mini trick or a gag or something in there to kind of put life back into the performance again, right? He's very fun and engaging. He actually engages the audience, right? He'll ask them questions. He'll, you know, he'll look to the audience members when something silly happens. He's not just performing a magic trick and then the trick's over and then he goes on to the next one. He ties everything together, right? He does callbacks. Callbacks are a really big one. If you're putting an act together and you're not quite sure what is missing from your act, it's probably callbacks. Um, David Stone does like three or four different callbacks throughout this entire thing. He does the coin callback. He does the tape deck callback. He calls back to the wine bottle. He does the callback where he's like, and then he does the thing where he tosses it up and catches it. Um, he has multiple callbacks in his act. You don't need to go that far. Uh, like I said, for me, the callback is, as I use the purse frame a few times, I need a marker. Oh, I can't find it here. Let me reach into the purse and pull out a marker. They sign the card, I put the marker back in the purse. I put the purse away. Um, at the very end, 
uh, their card ends up folded and I point to the card box and I go inside of the card box and then they, they reach in and inside of the card box instead of their card is a piece of paper that says check the purse. And then, oh, I'm so sorry, I open the purse and I reach in and then it's their card inside of the purse uh, folded up. So like you do like these callback things um, and you can kind of use those callbacks to tie your whole act together. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I do plan to do more of these anatomy of our performance videos in the future. But again, uh, I encourage you guys to go back and watch David Stone's performance one more time all the way through uh, with these things that I kind of told you about, keeping those things in mind. It's really gonna help you guys to understand how to build an act. Uh, oftentimes, I'm actually doing, I have a student right now who at, who's trying his best to put put these um, you know routines together and and he's doing a great job in his mind he's like but this doesn't go with this and this doesn't go with this so how do I tie all these things together and I think watching this video is going to do a really good job of kind of explaining how you take those different things because like I said coins cigarettes a cell phone a bottle of wine and a tape deck have nothing to do <laughs> Uh, you know, or like a deck of cards, these items have nothing to do with each other, but yet they're all in the same performance and David is able to trans, you know, to go from, uh, transition is the word I was looking for, transition from effect to effect to effect in like in a super seamless way. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more of these anatomy of a performance videos. I'll be doing more of them in the future. And uh, again, thank you guys so much for watching. Now go back and watch David Stone perform one more time because it is awesome.